Today marks the release date for the monthly housing starts and building permits report by the Census Bureau, which serves as a major economic indicator, reflecting the level of construction activity in the housing market. So joining me now to talk more about it is Middleburg Community's Chief Economist, Brad Case. Uh, Brad, thanks for joining. I'm glad to be with you, Kristen. Uh, takeaways from this data today. It was, it was a little bit disappointing. I expected starts to be up, and that's really because we've seen an increase in employment in residential construction. And, uh, and so I expected that tra to translate to more construction activity. We didn't. I wouldn't take too much away from that. Um, you know, all, all indicators sort of bounce around from month to month, so it's important to be careful not to put too much emphasis on one month of data. Um, but, it, but it was something that I did expect to be a little bit stronger than it was this morning. What does this tell us about the state of the housing market? Well, it, what we see in the housing market is that starting with, with the beginning of the COVID pandemic, there was a huge increase in demand for housing. And that showed up both in the prices of owner-occupied housing and in the number of people who wanted to rent their own apartments and, and move out from their parents' basement or something like that. So we had this big demand surge. Um, what followed that was a big supply surge. And fortunately, both of those seem to be behind us. So what it says about, about the market going forward is, I expect both demand growth and supply growth to moderate substantially. So I expect that, that weakness this morning just to be a one-month phenomenon. I don't expect it to be really important going forward. Mm -hmm. How closely are you watching rates and what that means for the economy? So the economy has, been, has continued to be really strong and resilient. And this is something that I've been, been talking about for really almost two and a half years now. Um, people were calling a recession. I was saying, great, but there's no data showing it. So I'm still looking for data. Now, uh, a report like this morning, you know, um, could be taken as something that says, all right, the, the economy is weaker and maybe the Fed reduces rates. I don't think that's the right interpretation because just yesterday there was a, a strong uh, a retail sales indicator that came out. Um, early, uh, later this morning, there was a, there was a, uh, a capacity utilization manufacturing statistic that was just where it should have been. You basically, you want to look for the whole set of indicators and say, does this tell us that the overall economy is pretty good? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes, it's still pretty good. I don't see the kind of weakness that would bring, uh, that would cause the Fed to start lowering interest rates. Okay, so we had gotten to this year with the Fed expecting three rate cuts almost seemed like it kind of caved to the market, to be quite honest, because the market was expecting six. And uh, now market expectations certainly have been dialed back based on solid economic data, yeah. Uh, yeah. which you cited. And so if rates remain at their current levels, uh, do you feel that the economy can continue to remain strong? Yes. You know, we, 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 uh, the, the earliest sign of weakness in the economy would probably come with consumer spending. But as I said, the retail numbers that came out yesterday were stronger than expected. So we're not seeing weakness there. We would then see weakness in maybe manufacturing activity. And the capacity utilization numbers that came out this morning didn't show that. Um, we would see weakness in, um, in income growth. We're not seeing that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the Fed really is not in a situation where they can afford to cut rates because if they were to cut rates, that might stimulate more inflation and they really want to get away from that. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're seeing is, is you know, recently somebody asked me, if we, if we have a, a soft landing, what will it look like? This is what it looks like. Some of the indicators will be stronger than expected. Some will be weaker. But generally speaking, the economy will be going along just nicely. So uh, based on that soft landing and the data that you've been following, where would you place us in the economic cycle? So I, I would say we're right in the part of the economic cycle where we would like to be and would like to stay. We don't, you don't want things to be too active. You don't want things, obviously, you don't want to be, be in a recession. Um, when we're talking about interest rates, for example, you don't want really low interest rates because when interest rates are really low, people have the ability to borrow money to do really stupid things with it. What you want is for interest rates to be at a level where it, where it uh, enables people who have good investments to get funding for them, but prevents people from, who have bad investments mm -hmm. from making those. So really, in a perfect world, we would stay where we are forever. Okay. Now, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> So uh, what would you forecast? When could a change come and what would trigger that? So I'm, I, I have no basis for forecasting anything. The one thing that I would worry about is that, you know, you talked about strong earning growth in, in, among stocks in the stock market. That's a very important thing. 
I do worry about how much people are paying to get their hands on a share of those earnings. And if at some point they decide that it's not worth paying so much to get, to get that earnings growth, then you see some weakness in the stock market, and that could, that could ripple through the rest of the economy. I'm not forecasting that either. I would, you know, that's not the kind of thing that, that a sensible economist would do. Um, but that's the kind of risk that we face for the, for the economy going forward. So even though we've seen a pullback, uh, which has been triggered in the stock market by sticky inflation, uh, re-rating of rate forecasts, right, pushing those rate cuts back a bit, and a response that we're waiting on from Israel uh, to the Iran-backed attack that was thwarted mm -hmm. over the weekend, you still feel confident uh, that the stock market would remain in an uptrend? Yes, I do. If it looks like there aren't any risks, then you're not looking hard enough. There are always going to be risks. So the risk of, of, uh, of a broadening of the war in, in the Middle East, yeah, that's a real risk. How could it affect us? It could affect uh, supply chains, for example. Mm -hmm. And that could drive inflation back up. That would really be, a, be too bad because the Fed would need to respond by raising interest rates to fight against the inflationary protect, yes. pressure from that. But, but again, it's not something that I would expect to happen. It's just a risk that's in the background. Probably the bigger risk is that, is that consumption falters, and maybe that's because of a, of a decline in the stock market. Do you feel confident that inflation can get under control? Absolutely. If, if you look at, at, at inflation, the main thing that's keeping inflation up is not rent growth, but how rent growth is measured. And so rent growth, as measured in the CPI, is going down relentlessly. And so that will bring down the overall CPI. So it's important for, for investors to understand the Fed is not fooled by how the data are collected for that component of the CPI. So the Fed knows that actual inflation that people are feeling right now mm -hmm. is quite a bit less than the CPI is, is reporting. The Fed's responding to actual inflation, not, not the numbers that come out with the CPI. Okay, uh, so to that end, then, why would the Fed dial back its rate cut forecasts? So, so the Fed, the Fed, I want to be fair to the Fed. They don't forecast rate cuts. That's not their job. Their job is to forecast the state of the economy and then say what would, what would, what rates would be appropriate in that state of the economy. So, when they dial back their rate, uh, their statements about what they think the future rates will be, what they're saying is the economy is stronger than we expected it to be. Because, so for example, I talked about the tremendous surge in demand for housing. They're taking that into account and they're seeing that rents are stronger than they expected. They're stronger than I expected. They're stronger than everybody expected. So when they say we're looking at data every month, they really mean it. It's really important for investors to look at what the Fed says. They are trying not to fool anybody. Right. They're trying to tell everybody exactly what they think there is going to happen and how they're going to respond to it. And it's best for people to believe that. Uh, my final question yeah. uh, to you is, what else do our viewers need to know about the economy and their investments? Well, you know, the, the worst thing that, pe that investors can do is overreact um, to either good or bad news, um, especially bad news. Because if you have a piece of bad news like the housing report that came out this morning, and you think, oh my God, I have to pull back on my investing in the stock market, that's the wrong thing to do, especially for your viewers. They're going to be invested for 50 years, and they need to know that over a 50-year period, the stock market is where they need to be invested. And so you don't want to respond to some jittery month-to-month -month movement in data by taking money out of your investments, especially your investments in the stock market. All right, Brad Case, Chief Economist for Middleburg Communities. So much data to talk about, Brad. Thank you. It's a pleasure.